Hey everyone, this is Wafa for a new video interviewing an amazing and super inspiring senior professional. Her name is Elizabeth Castrillon Jimenez, and she is an environmental and sustainability expert for an international company. Elizabeth, hi. Hello, and hello everyone. Very excited to be here with you, Wafa. I am so excited to have you with us today. As usual, like the traditional ones, please start by introducing yourself. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Castrellón Jimenez. I, I am over, originally from Colombia, right now living in the Netherlands after big journeys and transitions uh, in, my, in my life and um, professional career. Uh, social impact and sustainability expert, uh, former director of the advisory services in social impact at Impact, a boutique consulting firm in, in Toronto, Canada. And yeah, now in the Netherlands, uh, recently joined Bos Calis, an uh, international maritime infrastructure company to support the offshore energy division in their projects from the environmental and sustainability perspective. So happy to be here and yeah, let's dive in. So let's deep dive into what you do. Tell us about what is exactly the job of a sustainability and environmental expert. It entails a lot of advisory, a lot of consulting being uh, external or internal. In my previous job, uh, I was mainly a consultant to corporations and main role was to develop strategies and uh, social impact programs uh, to support uh, internally being employees and, and how we could make greater impact in given um, like social causes or even serve as a bridge with uh, the civil society, con corporations and civil society to work together towards solving uh, an environmental or social impact pro uh, uh, issue in the world. Creating programs, creating uh, processes for engagement and, and also stakeholder management. So our clients, uh, yes, would be better set to not just work on the profitability, but also making an impact in, in some area that was important to them and to, and to their purpose is still tied to their business objectives. Thank you for clarifying your job. How do you get out of college and, and, and now and become a sustainability expert? Back then it was not you know, one of the top concentrations, like masters we could choose. So how, how did you get here? Tell us about your academic slash career path up from college up until now? It hasn't been a straightforward one, Bafa, let me tell you. Uh, a, a lot of twists and turns to, to get to this point and also to understand a few years ago what was going to be my career path. To your question, I studied business in college back in, in Colombia. A lot of traditional careers over there. So social impact, sustainability was not a thing, was nothing that I could think of, nothing that was in my radar. And I started in the corporate world over there as a business, as a business manager for similar is uh, medical simulation devices uh, for Colombia. Uh, there I had the opportunity to work with a lot of international uh, suppliers to our company and uh, that helped me a little bit more to expand my horizons. Due to personal interest, due to international connections that I already had, I was fortunate enough to, to, to leave the country and, and I started uh, some adventures, uh, learning more about different cultures, which took me to uh, Israel, the US, Canada, now with Brazil, Italy, a lot of countries. And from every place, I took something. I would say that one of the places that opened some doors and a network for me to understand a little bit more about social impact sustainability was uh, the US. Uh, I lived in New York for three years. I was able to meet a lot of people that were in the social impact space, great professionals from entrepreneurs, to lawyers that were actually working towards solving an issue from their professional perspective. And I, and I thought that was so interesting because I could use my skills into doing something great and 
for me, that was quite great because I was part of a social impact program growing up. And I understood that probably I could very well, you know, work towards creating a social impact program like this to support children or women or whatever cause that was important to me or to the organization that I would be working for and, you know, manage it from an organization perspective. That's what brought me to a look for an MBA program, basically focus on sustainability and, and social impact. So uh, that's how I transitioned from just business, traditional, uh, in, in everything that has to do organizational strategy to something very focused on sustainability. I became the sustainability expert at university, joining every organization uh, in the executive team, the Social Impact Management Association, women in leadership, um, taking every opportunity to be part of that community uh, with the university. Actually, I, I was able to go to Davos for the World Economic Forum and support some case competitions and be part of, uh, of that amazing network. And that really opened a lot of doors for me. So after college, I think being ingrained into, into the, the circle, the niche of experts in the city was quite uh, seamless because the networking uh, had been done in the time that I was at university that opened a lot of doors. And uh, I immediately joint impact after graduation. So that's a little bit how it went about a long story short. It sounds like you figured it out as you went. And it's very interesting. What I'm really hearing where two big phases is uh, the, the, the era where you were a business developer, a business manager, correct? And in, in corporation. And the second era is when you start thinking, wait a minute, I could leverage my skill as a consultant to have a positive impact in the world. So then you picked, you know, sustainability in exactly. working for the environment. Why did you pick that specific niche? You could have, you know, um, Last week, I was speaking with uh, Jean-Pierre Laporte, which is the CEO of Integration Pension Management Corporation in Canada. He had a similar path where he was a pension fund lawyer and he worked in a big corporation. He described it as a very transactional industry. And um, he thought, I need more meaning in my life. I need, I need more fulfillment. I need to use my skills and my expertise in pension funds as a pension fund lawyer to create good. So therefore, he built from the ground a pension fund management company who then allows entrepreneurs and non-unionized uh, professionals to also have a pension plan for their retirement with a lot of tax benefits. So that's his way of doing a better good. So why did you choose uh, the environment? It's actually very similar. A lot of professionals that are choosing this path, we're doing it because we're not satisfied with the way business are being done and how we could invest our time and our skills in, in, a, in a company that perhaps is not fulfilling that, that sense of, of meaning. And, that, and that, was, that was set for me. I, I was, yeah, satisfied with, with what I was getting in terms of, of the material of, of, the, of the position I was in out of college. But I was not satisfied after a couple of years with any, any impact, any meaning in, in the role I was having in, in uh, that corporation. So um, for me, it was a little bit more about uh, being satisfied personally and professionally and, uh, and contributing to something more uh, just like apart from capitalism and uh, and growth in the sense that we know it. Um, I was thinking that I could make an impact from inside of corporations I, that I could contribute to an organization, uh, yeah, like an NGO from a managerial perspective. So I saw so many paths out there to, to make an impact. So that, that's what brought me to, to the social impact and sustainability space Mainly, mainly that need for more, that need for, for meaning 
and and that need to to contribute as as I got the support I I got growing up because I think that story uh, and the way I saw social impact in New York when I was like thinking why an MBA why sustainability really brought me back to my roots in Colombia and say like yeah that was actually very cool and thanks to this uh, program perhaps. I'm the person that I am today. What struck me when I heard your story was how you immersed yourself. That caught my attention in a career mini course that I will refer in the description box below that's called Career Transition Made Simple. Uh, in one of the modules, I share how important it is once we figured out a few career options that we want to dive in to immerse ourselves and to really, really be soaked into the culture of that field, whether it's finance, whether it's law, whether it's sustainability and environment. And that's what you did. So walk me through that process of thinking, okay, so I don't know anything about this field, but I want to volunteer and use my free time, you know, stay a little bit later or, you know, just ask for anything I could to get a little bit of experience and exposure into this uh, specific niche. Growing up, perhaps at least I didn't have that role model that I was like looking at uh, following or that advisor, no, you're going to do this, you're going to go to do your MBA or so on and so forth. So everything in my life was a little bit learning by doing um, so for me, that transition was rather by, by meeting the right people in the right place at the right time. When I was in New York, actually, that first I was starting to make so many connections with these people in the so- social impact and sustainability space. I found it quite interesting. So I started uh, contributing and volunteering to some of the organizations, uh, for example, yeah, the Center for Social Innovation. I was going there for uh, a lot of events and, and meeting the people in that specific network. I found myself very interested in reading all of the international news every day, zoning in to those uh, articles that, that talked about like social issues and multilateral organizations and, and the UN and what's going on uh, with food shortages and and I was like, okay, let's wait a second. There is a pattern. And that was not after a month. That was not after a year. It took me a couple of years to start identifying those patterns. What were the things that I was more interested in? What were the things that were cutting my attention every day or every week? And, and then I was like, like pursuing more in a, in a, it at first was not very like intentional. I was just doing it. But uh, afterwards, finding those patterns was very interesting because that really reconfirmed that it, what I wanted and make the, like connected the dots for me to say like, yes, I, I really would love to, to go into school, do my MBA, specialize in this. Another way that I, that I found about this transition uh, was literally going through uh, job posts. Going through job posts about social impact program managers or yeah, a consultant uh, for environmental and social impact. And looking at the descriptions and, being, I'm, I'm trying to see myself in those positions. Would I like to do this? And I, and I checked other ones. I checked some that were perhaps more finance oriented or um, in other areas of expertise. And I quite didn't see myself over there. So that was second. And then third, I started going into the curriculums of a lot of universities, some that were more traditionally oriented, more into the communication, finance, accounting, um, and other ones that really had this specialization as one of their core specializations. And uh, and the ones that had the specialization of sustainability, a real path, some core courses that were like like great to to give me the tools I needed to 
to you know like start the career in sustainability were so appealing to me. So I think those uh, three, four things really helped me with the transition from being just a, a, a person in business to transition into a sustainability expert and, and starting in that space, which I would say uh, in Toronto, for example, was a quite niche, uh, but actually really rewarding because you, you do see that there are great opportunities out there to, to succeed in that space. I truly acknowledge the intellectual curiosity you demonstrated when you paid attention to your initial interest and therefore started doing a little bit more of due diligence, a little bit more of research. Just by curiosity, looking at the jobs, it's, it's very innocent at first, but it's a big thing you did right there because for a lot of people, sometimes, you know, they get stopped. They just think that they're it's a whim or that they're being distracted about, you know, with life. They think, yeah, I'll never do it. Just focus on on, on, on your current main job, the one that you've graduated for, that you're paid for at the moment. Now, Elizabeth, I really want the viewers to be able to picture and bridge the gap between your time as um, a business manager in Colombia and a corporation there, and when you were doing an MBA to become a sustainability and environmental expert. Tell us about that. I, I just didn't want to be the business manager for Colombia. I initially, uh, 11 years ago, I thought, yeah, I could perfectly be the sales manager for Latin America. Who knows? For, for the Americas. That was, that was what, I, what I wanted. And, and, I, and I left the country uh, trying to pursue that. Um, one thing left to another in several places that, that I, 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 I wanted to work for and then that uh, they really liked my profile, but there would be always the but. But you only have your bachelor's. But so I was like, okay, if I only have the bachelor's, then I'll do my master's. But it was back there, there in New York during my three years in in the city that I was inspired to to start researching more, learning more about the sustainability space, social impact and sustainability space, um, to, yeah, to work for, to volunteer for some organizations, to, um, to change the career path, to change a little bit my chip, uh, my chip in terms of what I wanted, because then when I was there, perhaps the, the, the dream job that I had was was not the dream job anymore. So um, yeah, to your question, uh, how how it happened, I eventually was not a, actually working in my professional career during those years in New York. I was working in the in the service industry in a restaurant where I made amazing friends, where I learned a lot, um, a lot of disciplines, a lot of perseverance I, I was inspired by, by my colleagues every single day who had a lot of courage to, to pursue their dreams and um, and that was the only possibility for me to be in a place that would continue to to support me financially to help me support financially and also to to help me continue my studies in the best places, for example, for, for the GMAT and for to improve my English and all of these things. So I think I needed to be there in order to, to improve in the ways I needed to improve and, and get started or, or just um, applied for, for the MBA programs in the US and Canada. So yes, that, that was that, that little gap over there uh, is is interesting because even when you're writing your cover letters for the MBA, sometimes you don't even know how to to reframe it. So it's not it's not seen as oh my god, it's it's lost time because I don't see it that way. I saw it. I see it as a as a time of so much learning, of so much experience, of um, understanding more about yourself, being humble. Uh, seeing how you are not alone in the journey and you need so many people and so many 
uh, you know, experiences to really understand what you want. So um, really interesting. And I really value that journey because right now uh, I'm so certain about the things that I, that I do and that I want to do and, and how I move forward with my career. And, and, and I'm looking back, perhaps I would, I would do it again. Because I think I think just uh, it, the journey itself and how things happened and and how one thing led to another one, uh, really really helped me appreciate the now and the things that I that I really want in the future. What an incredible story! There's so much to unpack there. At this time, you know, I think some of our viewers will still wonder. You know, some of our highly educated and and whether younger, still advanced professional will wonder, wait, but so when you applied into the MBA, did you put that you were a waitress uh, in your okay. resume? Did yes, you? I did. I did. Um, I needed to tell my story. Uh, it was very, very hard to, to leave the gaps, to convey the story that I come from a lot of middle class neighborhood in Colombia, in Medellin. And, and say, yes, sure, I've been living in New York for, for two and a half years. How exactly? So that was something that needed to be said. And, and in a lot of, like some of the essays, I, I tried to convey the value of that experience, but I couldn't leave it out. I couldn't leave it up, uh, out because that was, that was part of my process. And that was going to be part of my of my my story. It's important for for uh, the admissions to understand the 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 process you as a candidate you're going through in order to to make it happen, to make it possible for you for you to to go to to do a, a, such a high level uh, studies in in abroad. I think. Not a lot of people in Latin America has um, have the fortune to to go to an MBA program in North America or in Europe or in other you know top places, top tier universities in the world, and um, and that's quite a challenge. But then you need to you need to do some things um, that go above and beyond to be able to to accomplish it. And that was my mindset, and that was what I was set up to do. I think you spoke about the GMAT. Uh, uh, previously, I took the gym at five times, and every time I needed to do better, I needed to do better in order to go to university I wanted to go to, and that was not an easy process. That took me two years and a half, um, but that was that that that's one of the the main things that, for example, I advise to your audience: persistency and discipline. Is, is one of the things that I think is the key uh, for, for succeeding and accomplishing a big goal. I think you were 100% right to not hide the fact that you were working as a waitress in New York to support yourself and that you fully embraced your story from Colombia to New York and then to Toronto. You know, in, in interviewers, they don't really care about what you've done. They care about the story behind that and to what extent you're able to prove them that you have the values that they're looking for, for the person they want to work with every single day. And you also have the transferable skills. Now, Elizabeth, during this interview so far, you've mentioned your beautiful country, Colombia. You mentioned being a proud Latina. Tell us about what are the core values that your culture has taught you that helped you build a successful career? Uh, thank you, Alfa. That's a, that's a, a great question. Um, I would say uh, perhaps the most important is resilience. Uh, we are a very resilient country. So uh, being abroad, I think being a resilient person has really, really advanced the opportunities that I have had uh, as, a migrant, as an immigrant uh, in the US, in Canada, and now in the Netherlands. Um, that has been like key to, to, to the journey itself. Um, another value, I think, uh, being humble, I think that's super important for us to 
in, in Colombia to, to know our roots, to know that the community around us, it's so important as, as, as the individual, individual itself. Like for us, family and also our chosen family, it's so important to achieve any goal. And I think I really embrace that abroad. And for me, every step of the way, I create a community. And I am really grateful because every place opened its doors and I was able to make so many connections and so many friends. And I think they were core um, to, to my success as well. Um, and yeah, uh, I think, I think uh, yeah, like kindness and, and respect. Um, I think that that really uh, has been, you know, a, a key part of the person I am, and and how I I connect with my peers, how I connect with my with my friends, and and I have been able to build uh, a, a beautiful community and a lot of trust uh, everywhere I go. So I think, yeah, like. Uh, I have a lot of important things to bring from my country, but I would say uh, those three have been uh, really, really crucial. That makes sense. Thank you. Here's my last question for you. In 30 seconds, tell us what comes to mind when you hear the word coaching. Okay, coaching. So um, when I hear the word coaching, I, it brings me to mindfulness, uh, creating awareness, um, understanding uh, your inner self and also your environment and, and trying to find balance. Uh, when I hear coaching, sometimes I think about a little bit external, someone providing support and, and a guide for you to understand perhaps what is the path forward uh, but also, you know, any resource that you feel worse for you to, to make the steps that you need to make to, to be better, to be your better self. Wonderful. Great sum up. It's always interesting to hear how other people or how there are smart professionals out there perceive the profession of coaching. So thank you for sharing your view on this. The last word is for you. What do you want to share with the audience today? No, thank you very much for, for listening today. I, I hope that uh, the, the story and about the journey uh, was, was interesting and can help you in any way. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want to connect with a professional in the sustainability space, um, don't hesitate to, to reach out. You can find me on LinkedIn, Elizabeth Castrillon Jimenez. And yeah, see you next time. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for your amazing energy, your smile and sharing your story so candidly. You have such an inspiring story um, that's infused with resilience, but at the same time, enthusiasm, a contagious enthusiasm that I'm sure will transfer to the audience. So thank you so much for doing us the honor of sharing your story with us today. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. <laughs> of course, I will share Elizabeth's information down below. Thanks, everyone who's watched this video. It's such a pleasure to tune in with you guys today for another interview with a senior professional. See you next week for more. Bye.